you can clearly tell that the Washington football team was scared of bringing in another young quarterback after what happened with uh, Dwayne Haskins. You know, he didn't even make it through the end of his second season in Washington before Ron Rivera and the coaching staff sent him packing. And you get it, like it happens. Haskins wasn't prepared. He wasn't mature enough. He wasn't working hard enough. Like all of that, whatever you want to believe or feel. And Bob, bottom line is, he just wasn't playing well enough. But that said, just because you screw up at the position once doesn't mean that sitting there and going out and signing a Ryan, Ryan Fitzpatrick is the right fucking thing to do. Like, that was really stupid. And Washington pays the price for that still by that decision of, we're not going to try and trade up in the draft to go get a young quarterback to build around. We're going to try and piecemeal this shit because you clearly overrated what you had on this team. It is very clear that the Washington football team front office and head coach Ron Rivera thought this team was more in a contender in 2021 or heading into 2021 than it realistically is. Like you look at them in 2020, sure they won the division, sure they made the playoffs, sure they played a tough competitive game against eventual Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers team in the wild card round. But they were a bad football team. And even when you look at their defense and you say, well, that was the strength of that team last year, even that defense was kind of overrated as cheeks if you really sit there and think about it. When you really think about it, that defense was overrated. So if you're overrating that defense and have too much confidence in what you have, like maybe you felt like you were the best team in that division heading into 2021, but the reality is you fucking weren't. The only reason you were in that spot, not the Cowboys, was because Dak Prescott got injured. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. And when you look at how this 2021 season played out, that's exactly the way it went. Dak stayed healthy. Cowboys won the division. And in fact, the fucking Washington football team got passed by the Philadelphia Eagles. So that fear of investing in the young quarterback just is striking to me. And going for Fitz Magic. He lasted about half of the first game of the season before he was out for the year with the damn hip injury. Thankfully, at least you had Taylor Heineke, which frankly, if you were going to sit there and say we're going to roll with somebody, why wouldn't you have rolled with Heineke to freaking begin with? Now, Heineke's not a super stud but by any stretch of the imagination, but he played well in that playoff game. Like, How much different was Fitzpatrick really going to be? And that's, that's the question I ask. Well, I guess it doesn't matter because you found out because Heineke was the starter most of the year. And for this team, not surprisingly, because they didn't have to do to the quarterback position and their defense was overrated, they were 2-5 and five to start the season. It kind of sunk their chances. Now, you can say they rebounded and won their next four games after the bye, so they were sitting there, you know, surprisingly for them, at 6-5. and five, They had a chance. They absolutely did. But when it came down to it, when it came down to December, January, where they really needed to win those games late, they just didn't get it done. They didn't handle their business. They lost four straight, removed all doubt. Just because you get that gift of playing a Giants team in Week 18 that had already quit doesn't change the fact that this team finished 7-10 and 10 and were out of the playoff mix this time. And it's not a surprise. Like when your offense is lower third of the league in terms of passing yards, total yards, points scored, when your defense is 25th in points allowed, 22nd in total yards allowed, 29th against the pass. It's really concerning with, considering how much they've invested in that defensive front, especially all the first round picks that are there and what you got to show for it. Sure, you had Chase Young out for injury for a majority of the season, but did it matter? Even if he was there, they were still going to suck. You know what I mean? It's, it's disheartening for this offense a little bit because they weren't the unit that held this team back. It was the defense at times. Antonio Gibson had over a thousand yards rushing. Terry McLaurin is a stud. He had a thousand yard receiving season. Problem is you had no other receiver get even to 400 yards receiving. Yikes. So it's basically the running game is tied to one player in Gibson, one wide receiver in the pass game in McLaurin, and that's about it. So you had the foundation of something but you got a long ways to go. Their offensive line, on the other hand, played really, really well. Like Charles Leno had a really good season there. Like this was a top of well, the league, top five, top 10 offensive line unit. So it's not all bad there, but defensively, ooh, yikes. I said, if anything, maybe it's a reflection of the fact that this unit was a little overrated heading into 2021, and they were. But now you're looking at 
the Washington Commanders. Name change, same dumbass approach to the quarterback position. No, we're not going to sit there and sign another Ryan Fitzpatrick type of guy. We're going to give up a third round pick and another third round pick that can turn into a second round pick for freaking Commander Carson Wentz. Now, maybe Ron Rivera looks at Carson Wentz and says, you know what? He reminds me of Cam. And I get that. Like Carson reminded me some of Cam coming out of North Dakota State. But to trade multiple day two picks for a guy like Carson Wentz after you saw what he saw, what you saw out of him in 2021 in Indianapolis, a team that gave up a second round pick and then a first round pick, wasn't it? Ultimately, to get a Carson Wentz. They were ready to get rid of him after a year. Doesn't it make you want to stop, pause, think for a second, and be like, you know, this team gave up a shit ton to get him a year ago and they already want to move on from him. Maybe ding dong dumb dick, that's an indication that he's not any fucking good or not nearly good enough for us to want to give away multiple day two picks in order to bring him into the fold. Like, when do will NFL teams learn? Like, sure, the first couple of years I was banging the drum for Carson Wentz like a motherfucker, and I should have been. You know, in 2017, before he blew up the knee, he was the MVP of the league. But you know what? Shit changes. There's no reason to be stubborn about it. And until proven otherwise, Carson wants his ass cheeks. So why would you give up multiple day two picks to trade for ass cheeks? I just don't fucking get it. You want some ass cheeks to pound so fucking bad? Go buy yourself some fancy freaking sex doll for a thousand or two thousand dollars or whatever the hell those things are priced at nowadays. And smash them cheeks that way. That's really stupid. You better really hope this deal works out. That's how you're going to address the quarterback position. For a guy that the Philadelphia Eagles invested a shit ton into him to only say, you know what? A year after we've given him a massive contract extension, we want out. The Colts gave up a shit ton to get him. And a year later, they're saying, we want out. But somehow, some way, the Washington football team will be the magical elixir. Ron Rivera will have the right stuff. Just dumb. Teams diluting themselves from reality. Now, as always, it could work out. You could put him in a situation where you say, you know what? You're not putting all of the burden on him, but if you're going to do that, you got some work to do on offense. You need to beef up that receiving core. You need to get a tight end that you can rely upon. All the while, you still got to make several moves on that defense because that secondary was shit last year. I'm just surprised that a team would continue to want to invest that type of draft pick capital into acquiring a Carson Wentz. He's becoming the fucking Russell Westbrook of the NFL. At what point in time do you have to sit there and say, man, every team that has him for a year now seems to not be waiting to fucking move on from him. They're more than glad to do so. Well, you wonder why. When are you going to start wondering why? Unbelievable.